How many of you have seen the movie, the movie Good Morning Vietnam? <laughs> well, that does wonders for my ego. <laughs> Probably doesn't hurt my bank account either. But it's been an interesting experience over the last 20 years or so um, because of the ubiquity of the film on late night television, my 15 minutes of fame has stretched out over more than 20 years. But it's strange because a lot of people know the name, but not many people know the face, which leads to some interesting things happening. For example, I was at a reception uh, last night here in Washington, and they give you these little sticky tags with your name on them. Uh, my wife calls them nerd tags. And as I was uh, walking past a group, somebody recognized the name because I heard one person say to the other, that's the guy they made that movie about, Good Morning Vietnam. The other person said, no, that can't be him. That guy doesn't look a bit like Robin Williams. <laughs> and if that wasn't bad enough, another person said, well, of course not. That's Judge Bork. <laughs> um, but the, 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 the fame is starting to fade just a little bit, and I was made aware of that a couple of months ago when I was having lunch with a friend who works at the uh, executive office, the Eisenhower Executive Office Building next to the White House. And I went in around noontime, I walked up to the guard sitting at the desk, and I said, uh, would you please tell Mr. So-and-so I'm here? And he said, uh, yes, sir, how do you spell your last name? And I read it, and, or I saved it, said it to him, and he typed it into the computer and looked at the screen and said, Adrian. I said, yes. He said, the Adrian Cronauer? And I said, <clears throat> yes. And he said, you mean from Dead Poets Society? <laughs> well, it could have been worse. He could have said Mrs. Doubtfire. So. <laughs> but having had this notoriety over the past number of years, um, I've learned that there are a lot of things people always want to know about. And the number one question is always, how much of that movie was real? Well, those of you who have been in the military know if I had done half the stuff that Robin Williams did in that movie, I'd still be in Leavenworth this morning instead of Washington. There's a lot of Hollywood exaggeration and outright imagination. To go through a quick uh, listing, let's see. Yes, I was a disc jockey in Vietnam. I think, anything else? <laughs> oh yes, I did teach English during my off-duty time. Um, no, I did not teach my class how to swear and use New York street slang. And no, I was not teaching because I was trying to meet this particularly beautiful Vietnamese girl. At least not one particular beautiful Vietnamese girl. Um, I was not in a jeep that was hit by a landmine. I did not get lost in the jungle trying to avoid the Viet Cong. I was not thrown out of Vietnam. I stayed for my full one-year tour and was honorably discharged, thank you. None of the characters in the film are based on actual people for legal reasons, like invasion of privacy and slander. On the other hand, if you name any character in the film, I could think of a half a dozen people that I knew during my, half, my, during my uh, uh, four years in the Air Force, and you probably could too. Um, let's see, anything else? Um, I did start each morning, uh, each program, by yelling, Good morning, Vietnam. And I found out when I went out into the field to do interviews that it was not unknown on a particularly bad day that I would yell, good morning, Vietnam, and some of the troops would turn to their radios and yell the GI equivalent of, get stuffed, grown hour. And on one occasion, a guy picked up his M16 and blew away his radio. <laughs> but that shout continued after I left. The fellow who took over the morning show from me, an Army specialist by the name of Kramer Hawes, he kept the same format and the same sign on. And it became a um, uh, uh, tradition with each, with each subsequent morning man. And now I'll go to a, um, to a uh, veterans occasion, uh, uh, event, and the man will come up to me and say, oh, I used to listen to you every morning. Really? When were you there? Oh, I was there in 65 and 70, or I was there in uh, uh, 69 and 70. Well, see, I was there in 65, 66. But what they remember hearing is that good morning, Vietnam. And there's one other thing that people always want to know, about one or two other things. First of all, they want to know, what is Robin really like? Robin Williams. And my answer is, I don't know. Because he's always on. You walk up to him and 
and, and say hello, and he starts doing a routine for you. Now, I'm a lawyer, not a shrink, so what do I know? But it is my layman's analysis that he's really a very shy, bashful, introverted person. And he, yeah, and he, he does all of these routines and, and imitations and shtick to build a wall around himself so you can never get through to hurt the real Robin. The only time I've ever seen him let that down is when he was playing with his kids because they're no threat to him. And people will say, are you as funny as Robin Williams? Well, I've amply demonstrated uh, in the last half hour that uh, I'm nowhere near as funny as Robin. I mean, think about it. If I were half that funny, I'd be out in Hollywood going nanu nanu and making a million dollars. But in one respect, I think I was uh, a better DJ than Robin. And a perfect example of that is the sign-on. What he did was just a rising crescendo of good morning Vietnam, which is not the way it was really done. In reality, you stress the word good for a very practical reason, because if you're a morning DJ, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. You are going to oversleep. And when that happens, you come tearing into the station at the very last moment, and you're staggering around, half asleep, half dressed. Uh, you don't have any records pulled. You don't know where your headphones are. You haven't, uh, haven't put you in your contact lenses. You don't have any tapes set up. You don't know where you... It, it's just chaos. And as you walk through the studio door, you hear the newsman saying, that's the latest from the Armed Forces Radio Newsroom. Next news in one hour. Now you've got to do something. So as you try and pull some records and find your headphones and get things all set up, you turn on, you turn on the uh, microphone and you say, Vietnam. That's the way we really did it. Thank you very much. <laughs>